Hello everyone. Yep, it's been a while again. I get very busy with uh, all the grading and the news of what's it's. But I am Professor Bard. Now this doesn't look like it for those new guys among you to World of Warships Legends. But believe me, this is. But this is going to be a bit of a special one because this is actually going to be a, uh, a three-parter. I'm going to tell you that right now. So this is part one of three. And this is about, if you read the title, CVs. If you don't know what a CV is, it's your friendly local neighborhood aircraft carrier. Mine happens to be in the Intrepid, but hey, that's just me. So, what is an aircraft carrier? And why the hell should I care? Well, aircraft carriers are boats that launch planes as their primary armament. Well, whoop de damn do, I'm a tanker. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, that means, Lorelei, that an aircraft carrier is normally, and I say this normally because <laughs> I know some smart people who put their carrier basically where the destroyer should be, and then question, why am I dead? But uh, that's the sad point. Um, there, so you're normally in the back, hidden away, behind even the battleships and normally you don't get to control your own damn ship so aircraft carriers have a special mechanic one of several to be honest uh, that allows you to place a waypoint on the map and by geolocation and a little bit of wizardry I'm assuming technically it's really just code but hey man whatever uh, your aircraft carrier, the ship itself, will sail over to that spot and give you an announcement of we've made it there and autopilot is going to be ending now. So, what does this look like and all that nonsense? We're going to get to that probably in part two. I'm going to go with, I'm going to do right now a very abbreviated overview. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Um, aircraft carriers have been in the game technically for a year now, uh, but only in actuality now. I'm going to say about two or three months. And I've been eh, more than that, probably actually four months at this point, actually. And I've been dragging my feet on this. Not because I don't think that it's important. It's just it's gotten very rambly and I'm actually keeping myself to a beat right now. So I'll be cutting a lot of that nonsense. So when aircraft carriers first came out, you only had two nations, now we have three. You only had the IJN and Japan, and the USN and the United States. You had, you, and you didn't have a tier seven, you only had tier five, so the highest you could go was tier five. So you had, on the low ends, the Langley for the United States, and the Hosho for Japan, uh, and if you went up a step to their max at the initial testing period, you would get the Ranger for the US and the Ryujiu for the IJN. And that worked great. And that colored my impression of CVs for a while. Well, now they came back out and some things that were kind of weird about them when they first launched, well, now they're fixed because to be fair, it was a test. So, things are going to get fixed. But, others broke, in my opinion. Uh, they're still playable, but it's a E. So, here's the thing. With the Langley and the whole show, I quickly got over their thing, and I would lo uh, love to go into them, but I'm not going to. The difference now becomes as you go higher tier. Well, again, now that... Ranger is more fresh in my mind because I've only played about five games in total with the Ranger with the new Ranger versus the old I can definitively tell you that the old Ranger and the new Ranger are basically the same so that one I'm uh, Happy about and I'm gonna assume that's gonna be the same for you I still don't have that one yet And to work on the whole show although the Germans are interesting and Now this is where we get to what this is going to be the meat and potatoes of basic descriptions and how-tos, kind of, 
and some things that are noticeable about it. So first let's start with the form factor of the aircraft carrier. There's a lot of different weird shapes, but most of them you'll see uh, are kind of dependent on where you go as a nation. Eventually when we get the Brits, you're going to see that they look a lot more similar to the United States than they say to the Germans or the or the IJN. The IJN are very weird in that when I say they're, they're flat, I mean they are flat. Okay? There, there ain't nothing above that damn deck except planes. But that then begs you the question, well, where's the smoke going out from the boilers? They're side dumping. That's something that the Adrian traditionally does do. They like side dumping their uh, exhaust, which is an option. It's weird, but it's an option. Whereas the Germans, eventually when the British come in, the British and the Americans, we, some of us tried side dumping and found that it was a dumb idea and we never went back to it. Others, we went and made gigantic side up uh, smokestacks, but there were still smokestacks and funnel arrangements, which is what the Langley is, and we'll talk about the Langley in just a second, because you're going to see some footage of it. Uh, and others, we just made a standard Citadel-ish kind of thing and treated it like a regular warship, except now we have to put it out to the edge instead of out in the main world, or not out in the middle of the ship, I should say. Carriers are flat. They really are. And they have aircraft on them. Now, they have two types of aircraft. Dive bombers and torpedo bombers. Now, what plane they are depends on what nation you got. Uh, and that's, that's fair enough. But they also each have their own special quirks about them. Like, for example, the U.S. planes, they're very rugged. They, are, they have a above average health pool, but they're very loud and very noticeable. Okay? You see them from a mile away. Whereas, in complete and stark contrast, the Japanese planes, they're made of tissue paper, basically. And if you sneeze a little too hard in their direction, eh, it might knock off the wing or two, or do some serious damage. But you can get right up to the enemy before they can and start noticing things. Slight hyperbole there, but they are much more stealthy than the Americans. And in general, faster as well, as I find. Uh, the Germans. They're as tanky as the Americans, but as fast as the Japanese. But they have two weird quirks. Number one, they're the only people with armor-piercing dive bombers and they have very short range torpedoes okay now time to, time to do some talking the reticle for your torpedo bomber uh is something that kind of looks like uh this it looks like two ellipses together with a crosshair and uh, join them and you'll notice that one ellipse is much bigger than the other don't worry that photo will be back and it'll be in action with sound later uh, but that is a dive bombing crosshair they're all the same it's just how tight they get depending on what bomb and also how accurate they are is basically how low do you want to go on your timer because you have about seven seconds for a dive bomber. You have seven seconds to release your bomb. And as and as time goes on, your crosshair slowly gets to ma to max tightness. So dispersion is now within the smaller area, but accuracy is still up in the air. Because well, I mean the enemy ship's moving. You're trying to lead the target. Because yes, you have to lead the target. Uh, you're, you know, he's trying to evade, and, you know, it's a Thursday, <laughs> uh, and the wind is pushing me in this direction while I'm trying to hit that direction. There's a lot of factors, 
but the main one is if you get it closer the likelihood of penetration goes down but for the most part you're using HE bombs again unless you're German German you want to actually wait as long as you can because now you've got velocity in there but that's just point point being you've got this curve okay uh, and what you want to do is you want to hit it on the curve. You want to hit the plant. You want to hit the boat on the right curve. There it is. And how do I know what the right curve is? Well, for accuracy, the lower you go, the better it is. Simply because there's less time for them to move out the way. Angular uh, velocities are now a lot tighter. And you can, in theory, figure out where it's going to be within reason of dispersion. Uh, just like every other, just like the shells, you can have a, it penetrates, it over penetrates, it bounces off, or it penetrates but does nothing. So that's analogous to a ricochet, a shatter, a penetration, and an over penetration. It's, it, it's what happened. Christ, phone, stop dinging at me. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's how your bombs are going to work. Now, HE obviously starts fires and knocks out things. If it's, think of it basically like a high explosive shell being dropped from the sky. But I mean, actually dropped from the sky, not it comes from the sky at a very steep angle because goddamn, I'm firing at 30 million miles away trying to hit a Yamato. Uh, so those are dive bombers. Dive bombers, you you can for okay. I'm gonna be careful here because depending on how you make your commander, which I guess would be the next logical step after this. Uh, it's I'm gonna say they're disposable to a point. Some of them are more disposable than others. So. Uh, torpedo bombers. Let's move actually to there. Your crosshair will look like this. Notice it's a chevron pointing backwards and what seems to be a line at the front that doesn't meet it to make a backwards facing triangle. I'll get to that in a minute. Don't worry, this photo will be in motion and with color and pictures and sound later. I know a few of those things, uh, I mean, you're literally looking at a picture, but you know what I mean. Uh, so, it's a simple crosshair if you're staring at it from the sky. And that's what this is. That's a aerial view of it. It looks unassuming, but it tells you everything. Because that V is basically your cone of fire. If, uh, to use a gun term. Uh... Because that's kind of the best way I can I can describe it. That's where it's going to radiate out of, and basically I think that's actually the tightest it can get. So that's telling you your minimum. That's telling you the minimum dispersion. Now when it goes into live action, which will be in a moment, uh, hopefully, uh, it, you'll you'll see what I mean. But. Now a word on AP. Uh, no, I'm one of torpedoes still. The IJN and the Americans, their torpedoes, and actually the Germans as well, aerial torpedoes aren't exactly powerful. I think the strongest out of them all right now uh, is currently the IJN, if I'm looking at tier 3 only, which is something that I can compare apples to apples to apples uh, but there's also a very big change between uh, Germany and the other two German torpedoes are actually a kilometer shorter range but since they have faster planes that means they can close the distance and they close up tight but the problem is they also have the worst dispersion let me explain I don't have photos for this, so you're going to have to uh, look at 
terror games when I'm playing the Rhine and, and the Lesser and whenever I get that and all the others. But German, I'm going to call them all aviatics. I know they're not aviatics, but I can't remember what they are. I think they're Henkels, actually. So German Henkels. They have, their torpedoes have a range of uh, 2.5 kilometers maximum with an inert range of about 0.5 kilometer, uh, 0.5 of a kilometer. So basically you have two kilometers worth of working room. The other two nations uh, in Japan and the US, they standardize on three kilometer, three and a half kilometers, sorry. And they have that same half a kilometer of uh of arming time which is really what it is otherwise known as a dead zone so in theory if you put your torpedoes shorter which is a valid strategy because that gives the ship less time to evade but it also means in theory if they turn slightly to either port or starboard depending on which side you're hitting them from and it's very short range they can dud the torpedo and they do no damage at all Think of it like this. If you've ever tried to run a destroyer and you've put and you've tried to launch the torpedoes to sink a ship and it's in that non-hazy area, yeah, it's that. Uh, and actually, since we're bringing up to, uh, uh, the destroyers, again, they have aerial torpedoes are low damage. Okay? I think the most powerful one of them all is actually the... Yeah, no, yeah, the most powerful one of them all is actually the U.S., and that barely cracks 400, 4,600, okay? So when I say it's low yielding, it's low yielding. And the HE, let's be honest, HE shells are actually about on par with the actual shells of destroyers. Although for the Ranger, depending on how you fit out the, uh, the captains for your aircraft carriers, you can upgrade either their torpedo damage or the bomb damage for the US I've went with bomb for the Ajan I went with torpedo and for the Germans I think I also went with bomb I think don't quote me on that just yet uh, but now since I've brought them up now and I've talked to all I need to do about the uh, torpedoes your commanders they are important and you so the general purpose commanders now in World of Warships uh, Legends denoted by the outline of a cruiser without a dash in the center so it's not an actual proper cruiser commander he is your general commander you can fit him to be if you need a battleship commander a destroyer commander an aircraft carrier commander or a cruiser commander you can fit him to however you need but there are also, just as there are, you know, dedicated battleship men, cruiser men, destroyer boys. Well, now you also have a dedicated aircraft carrier man. Uh, for the U.S. it's Ernest King. For the uh, Japanese, it's Yamaguchi. Uh, and I don't remember who it is for the Germans off the top of my head. Uh... I'm, I want to say Reda, but I'm 99% sure that is wrong. Uh, but either way, you have dedicated men for this. And by the way, this is very important. You need to be able to balance your aircraft. What I mean by that? Well, in an attack squadron of tier 5 and lower, because tier because we actually skip tiers. Actually, let me start with that first. You skip tiers on aircraft carriers. You go from three to five to seven. Uh, carriers come in as an offshoot of battleships. Now, carriers are also very expensive. Uh, to get into tier five, it's 6.4 million credits. To get to tier seven, it's 23 million. And that's without the other smaller upgrades that you need, say, you know, like, uh, flight controls and all that, you know, to get your carrier to respond, uh, to have planes come back quicker, to give them more health, 
to give them more anti-aircraft if that's a thing that you want to do or to give them more concealment uh, so that's before you get to those why is this so expensive and why do we skip well because how many carriers are there honestly from the world war ii period that are from different nations for the u.s you could easily put one at each stop but is that fair to say like the russians which on pc i do believe there actually is a russian tree uh no is it fair to the british who for some reason they actually haven't uh filled out their entire tree yet i think i could be wrong again that and that's for pc i could be very wrong on that but i don't believe so so i'm sticking with my numbers well no it's not fair to them either so that's why in my opinion i think but because you're skipping spots that also means that you're actually getting very well trained and you get n and you actually have a lot more knowledge they actually put and they're forcing you to make sure that the numbers are in your head you know where to be and how to do on different situations oh by the way uh lawyer and carriers print money like it ain't no tomorrow you can have a dog shit game and still somehow come out of there with enough money you number one to repair any damage or rebuild the ship depending on if you got sunk and still have enough money left over to actually put in the war chest it is actually hilarious uh so i think that is going to cover everything i want to say about commanders and oh wait no no it doesn't no okay carriers right the physical dimensions think of them as a mix between the honest to god love child no no think of a destroyer stretched out by a pipe bomb to battleship grade size but not battleship grade acceleration and with the same battleship grade acceleration but with basically a cruiser speed so it's got cruiser speed so that's somewhere in the vicinity and now we're talking tier five and above and actually no really every other ship except the langley <laughs> okay so everybody except langley uh, you're talking somewhere between high 20s low 30s of knots except Langley Langley you're maxing out at 20 whether you like it or not it's a converted collier if you don't know what collier is it's a ship that carries coal and resupplies coal to old coal powered uh, battleships and cruisers and destroyers yeah that was a thing the US did and we're upset for it other fun facts you can shoot through the langley like straight through because the the flight deck counts but none of the rigging underneath counts until you actually get to what looks like hull shape then it immediately picks up so there's a giant air gap so in theory shells can literally pass straight through you and you and people go wait how did you not take any damage like because your math is bad haha <laughs> i saved my ass a few times i'm not even gonna lie it was fucking hilarious anyways um <laughs> Where was I? So yeah, aircraft carriers normally have the handling of a battleship, the speeds of cruisers, but the ha but the acceleration of a battleship, and the armor protection of a goddamn destroyer. Okay. With to be honest, about as much gun as a destroyer as well. So that's interesting. So that's so, so that's kind of what I have to say about them. Except, oh yeah, I forgot one important thing. They have a literal country mile of turning radius. The Langley and the Hosho and the Ryan are shorter than the others, but as you go higher in tier, uh, you get to a wider circle. Because if I remember right, a mile is something like uh one point six kilometers or am i mixing that up with liters and cubic inches again uh 
Seven miles of the yeah, one point six. Okay, so it's it's the same thing. Cool. One point six one is is more accurate. Yeah, some of these have just under about a mile of of turning radius. Like off the top of my head, I know the Ranger is one thousand one hundred and thirty meters of radius turning, and they turn as fast as a battleship. So yeah. You can torpedo dodge in them. You can torpedo beat in them, but oh, it's not going to be easy. Now, I think about it, that's everything for the basic. We'll talk more about planes and loadouts and, and how you should fit them out in the second episode. But now, to the footage. So here we have the Langley. That's what it looks like. Uh, I've already upgraded past this, thank the Lord. Uh, so you can swap between HE and Torpedo uh, normally. I'm just giving you a good look at it. So you launch with your R2, or your right trigger, depending on how you want to call it. Uh, these are Corsairs. Uh, so you'll notice that there are some interesting things. Uh, here's the short, here's the two ellipses I was talking about. Here's one by the crosshair. Uh, I'm about to take the screenshot actually right over here. Yeah, that's where I took the screenshot. Uh, so we're gonna wait a little bit, and I'll talk to you about some of these special characteristics. So here I'm going to the waypoint, which is just a the circle on a square of the map, and you'll you'll go. So, uh, I'm, I'm pressing forward on my left stick, which is acceleration, or deceleration, and steer. Press right trigger to go into a dive. Press it again to uh, fight, in order to jump on. Torpedoes turning on this for So, the for destroyer lead it's difficult. So instead of shot that to get rid of it. Go on a mess either way. So swap to torpedoes. Now normally torpedo planes are in general slower speed it, uh, across the board, but that doesn't mean that Oh, that's something I forgot to mention as well. Yeah, torpe uh, the torpedoes themselves are actually also slower speed. Uh, they're slower speed than, say, a destroyer launch one. In fact, even tier 2 destroyers actually out damage them by about double, nearly triple. So, again, these are finishers, as I like to call them. But can you destroy a battleship with these if you can only use them? Yes. Battleships come in to take you out. Now notice it's a wide cone of fire. And as I slowly come in, uh, it goes in. Now notice it's still very wide and there was a center line in there. I'm firing off the center line. That is basically the divide between the two planes, since the planes are in stereo as I have a joke here. Now I'm reading off of the left edge. Reading off of the edges is the key that you sometimes need to use as well. Okay, I'm gonna load it while we... Actually, I've given it more leads. I still have killed him, but... Torpedoes to start. Our victory is in sight. Uh, there you go. So... Uh, you never have to worry about when you're spotted. Fighter planes come out instantly. Okay? If she slows down, you actually putting out your damaging plans, but hey, it's important to keep you alive. So, uh, something that we will see in the next video is another uh, important thing. Now you'll say, okay, so what's the buttons next to it on the up and the down of my D-pad? We'll get there, we'll get to one of those in this one. 
figuring out where to drop and how to drop is, is kind of a difficult thing. Because honestly, sometimes you actually do have it set perfect and you, and you then you just miss it. I happen to know that Lily actually likes to come close, or the normal things like to come close to actually where the center of the crosshair is, so I generally uh, go on the very, very side of the crosshair. I know for my IJN, I don't know what it is, it comes a little short of the cross uh, of the center bar of the crosshair. So I pull a little bit more. In a turning situation, go to the opposite side of the turn. Or actually no, go to the same side of the turn. So if they're swinging hard right, they're going hard on the outside on the right. If they're swinging hard left, go to the hard left of, the, of their turn. Because momentum will carry them. But does, again, that doesn't mean that you're going to get hit. Notice that as I do this song that uh, I do here is really about if you speed up while using torpedo planes, that cone, that wide angle cone, tightens a lot more. Or it tightens a lot quicker, I should say. Um, and if you slow down, it actually holds it in position. So it's always at that same angle. Uh, here I'm using speed boost. Uh, again, pull forward on my left stick. Up on the D-pad, what is that? That is the turbo cooler. That allows me to take out all that white, which is engine heat, because uh, your engines do overheat, and I can then continue using boost for as long as I want. Uh, this is a personal thing, by the way. The one what I'm about to say next is I believe that a carrier should go down, should go down to a carrier. Of That's everything you need to know so far about aircraft carriers. We'll jump back into this uh, next class. But this has been for this new Desmond World of Warships and Legends. I'll leave you with the crosshairs yet again. Uh, and with that, please practice, practice, practice. And learn where your bombs tend to normally drop. Because there is a pattern to them. Again, normally for me, if I go with German or uh, or American, it, the center of the crosshair is basically where they fall, and if it's the Adjan, it's a little bit south of that, for the most part. Just average it out. Thank you.